You know, Dumbleman is one of those classes that everybody just hates to fight against. You die to a grenade launcher? Well, he's a dirty roller spammer. You, you die to a sticky trap? Well, he's a dirty sticky spammer for some reason. I mean, it was a trap that's literally the opposite of spam. I don't know. It's just everybody complains about this guy. And I don't think he really deserves the bad reputation that he gets. But one good thing that's come out of this is that there are tons of stereotypes to talk about with this guy. So, once again, here's that obligatory disclaimer thingy-majigger. Uh, stereotypes don't mean everybody. There are reasons for it existing, but there are also exceptions. So don't get mad when it turns out that your favorite weapon gets a bad rap. Okay? Okay, let's get started. The grenade launcher is used by pretty much everyone and their mother at this point. I mean, sure, some people might favor other launchers, but everybody's used it at one point, whether it be Jose Gonzalez 2005 who just installed the game, or Cold Steel the demo main blasting Linkin Park and working on his Sonic OC, or just an absolute god amongst men hitting pills left and right. You never really know what kind of person is coming at you when you see the stock launcher, so obviously, this means that you should judge them based on their hats, since that's clearly a good indicator of skill. Hey you, yeah, yeah, you, are pipes too hard to hit? Do you struggle with prediction of any kind? Are you too lazy to put in the work to actually be able to play Demo Man? Well, fear not, the lock and load is for you. Featuring a faster projectile speed and no pill tumbling, your shots will basically connect themselves. <laughs> no, really, this thing is stupidly easy to use. Now, some people might argue that this weapon is a crutch, since you're losing 25% of your pills in exchange for pipes that are easier to hit, but fear not, this weapon also doesn't get rollers, so now you can say that it takes more skill to use. Even though that makes no sense whatsoever, because that's just another reason why you'd be better off using stock if you could actually aim. A lot of people use this launcher and for a variety of reasons. Some people use it because the pills are rounder and don't tumble, which actually makes them slightly more predictable due to the way that the source engine handles aerodynamics and wind resistance and stuff. Some people like to use it because the rollers are easier to control, but I think we can all agree that one thing that connects all of these people together is that they saw Banny use it in a competitive match once, so obviously that means it's the best launcher. Okay, but actually though, I use it because it sounds like a basketball and I think it's really funny. Okay, so there are quite a few stereotypes for this one. First, you've got the guy who's just a, a total meme lord. He realizes that the loose cannon is arguably Demo's worst primary launcher, but he uses it anyway because double knocks are stupid and really satisfying to pull off. So tell me, why do you use the loose cannon over other launchers? Because I'm about as casual as one can get, and I enjoy double dunking people, knocking them off cliffs, and making them crater a lot more than outright killing them. And I like the idea of being associated with cannons. Next, we've got the guy who used to use the old loose cannon. You know, the one with the faster projectile speed that you could basically spam down a choke point and get free double donks forever? But he's so used to it that he can't go back to any of the other launchers. This is also the guy who will constantly complain about the loose cannon, but, you know, use it anyway. There we go. You know, I hate the loose cannon. It's just like, ever since they nerfed the firing speed and the thing, it's like, what? I have a hundred and eight. I have like a hundred. Let me what? see. I have a hundred and eighty-four weapons on this can't kill. Can't and you just use a different launcher? And it's just like you know, I was playing Call of Duty Zombos the other day, and I was just like I was using the trying like like this isn't the um uh, this is loose cannon. And then they nerf loose cannons like what? this is a loose cannon. And finally, we've got the guy who's just a trimping god. He'll use the tide turner along with the loose cannon to extend his jumps and just fly everywhere and getting cabers and heads, and he's just absolutely freaking terrifying. Please don't kill me. These are most commonly associated with Demo Knights, but they can be used for a few other subclasses. Now, the Wee Booties are almost always seen on Demo Knights, but the Bootlegger sees more common use by Sticky Tanks and Demo Pans, etc. But really, I mean, let's be honest. If he's using either of these, he's probably Demo Knighting. You would think that the stereotype for this would have to do with overusing the Sticky Bomb Launcher to become a discount carpet bomber, but most demos using the Base Jumper really just use it for this. Come here. No. Come here, let me hit you. No, no, no you're using that's cheating. I have a high no, ground you're, banana kid. You're not allowed to. <laughs> no, please. I have the high ground banana kid. Oh boy, the sticky trilogy. Let's start with the easiest stereotype. 
Ah, oh, well, you can do spam life left click and hold right click. Zero skill ban. You suck. I don't care if you got a 23 kill streak going. Zero skill sticky bomb spammy fuck boy. And I can sort of see how this may seem cheap, but at the same time, there was a time when sticky bombs didn't actually have to ramp up. You know that little flicker they do when they get deployed? Before they can actually do maximum damage? Yeah. That actually didn't used to be a thing. So be happy it ain't like that anymore. Also, if I could just add to this really quickly, it's worth noting that this is by far the most common sticky launcher to see in general play, and people who use it are really, really defensive about using it. Like, obviously Travi's memeing, and if he's not, I'm sorry, but operating under the assumption that he was memeing, Somebody who heard that meme would probably take it personally and go into a long rant about why the sticky bomb launcher takes skill to use, and like, that's cool, dude, but like, it's the sticky bomb launcher. Like, come on. This thing. This fucking thing. Take the stock sticky bomb launcher stereotype and multiply it by asshole! I wanna hack your granddad's hip replacement, you little... Yeah. I kind of have to mention that this thing is meta and an absolute god tier weapon in MVM. I have carried entire MVM tours with this monstrosity. That being said, you will have to train a bit with this. Then, there's the regular game. Since sticky spam is widely hated, when you use this, people just laugh. There's nothing funnier than seeing a demo man spamming these on the point and furiously right-clicking. Legend has it, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the right clicks along with tears of frustration if someone uses this weapon offensively. Instead, set up some defensive traps. You know, use the sticky bombs to actually stick to something where your opponent doesn't expect it. Like a dispenser, this fucking bush on upward, your NG sentryness. Put a circle of these around the hoovy. They don't know what to do when this happens and just shout for help. Back to you, Soundsmith. So pretty much everybody puts the jumper weapons in the meme bin, right? Like, nobody uses them seriously. But in a casual setting, the sticky jumper can actually be used as a legit weapon. It's actually more of a utility, I guess. I, look, since the demo basically has two primary weapons, if you can hit your pills, you not only become a terrifyingly mobile target, but you can also deal insane amounts of damage. You don't believe me? Well, go watch Cirque, that dude's nuts. Alright, so all of the shields can pretty safely be placed under the Demo Knight category, but each one of them has different specific stereotypes about them. For example, the Charge and Targe is the shield that's most commonly used by Hybrid Knights. These are the guys that have a sword, but primarily use their grenade launcher. This is because the Charge and Targe has the highest resistance out of all of the shields, which makes the demo significantly tankier and hard to kill, especially against soldiers and other demos. Now, for this reason, you can expect these guys to play aggressively at first, but then as soon as they take any damage of any kind, they'll just charge out and run to a health pack. They're really annoying to play against since they're really hard to finish off, but if it's any consolation, most of them can't aim pills anyway, so they won't be killing you either. This is the shield used mostly by pure demo knights. There's still a significant amount of resistance attached to it, but it does way more damage when running into somebody than the Targe does. Splendid screen demos will probably try to overuse this, and they'll end up overextending way too much. Also, they really like times 10 mode, for obvious reasons. This is probably the most common shield out of the three at this point, since the control that you get while charging is invaluable for lots and lots of maps. It's not nearly as ridiculous as it was on release, but it's still a really strong choice despite having the weakest resistances out of the three. Tide Turner demos will tend to use this shield as a mobility tool more than a tool to get heads. You'll see them charging all the time because of the fact that you get your charge back on kill, and weirdly enough, they seem to be very aggressive. I don't really know why though. I mean, more often than not, it'll just get them killed. This guy is a stock purist, despite there being clearly superior options to the bottle. He'll insist on using the stock bottle. Maybe this is because he has a strange one. Maybe it's because he's an old school player and he misses the fact that the bottle used to break when you hit somebody with it. I don't know. But one thing that we can be sure of is that this guy will use the stock taunt for the bottle at basically every opportunity. These guys don't like the look of the stock bottle, but they still want to be alcoholic demolition men, which is why there should be a strangify for this. No, seriously, Valve, get on it. 
Most people's go-to stereotype for this weapon has to do with the brain-dead hitbox abuser, but more often than not, Islander demos are newer players who just got it from an achievement, and then they equip it because, I mean, it's a huge sword, obviously it's gonna do more damage, I mean, that makes sense, I guess. Thing is, they don't even realize that it takes away 25 health, leading to situations like this happening a lot. Okay, chances are you're only using this because it's technically an unusual. I mean, sure, you might be better off with the stock reskin or the skull cutter or something, but it's an unusual. You main Peach in Super Smash Bros, and you constantly forward smash. Ah, yeah! No, but really though, the stereotype for this is basically the same as the Islander, except instead of getting it from an achievement, you got it from a random drop. Now as far as I'm aware, this is technically the meta melee weapon for competitive demo, or at least it used to be. So if someone is using the skull cutter, they either play comp and take themselves a bit too seriously, or they're doing the stupid ass base jumper skull cutter strategy. Also, it's worth noting that this is the only sword-like weapon for demo that can get random crits, so you'll see this used fairly regularly with the tide turner. The Claydemore, and that is the pronunciation, not the translation, I know it's the Gaelic spelling of Claymore. The Claydemore used to be the king of ping-ponging when paired with the Tide Turner, but now most people just see it as a discount Zatoichi. It is a rare sight these days on the battlefield, but when you do see one, it's for one of three reasons. One, they are new to the game and it's literally the only demo night unlock they have. Two, they are people who bought a professional strange killstreak or collector's one back when it was a good weapon, and are holding on to it either hoping that Valve changes it back to what it used to be, or they don't want to sell it for an eighth of what they bought it for. God, those poor guys. Or three, they are a hybrid knight that understands that it has no downsides when sheathed and can quickly be deployed for a little extra health and pick kills outside of his grenade launcher's range. These are hybrid knights that mostly favor the grenade launcher and will use it the majority of the time, but they are competent with both Demo Man and Demo Knight gameplay. So when you see that Claydemore come out, you know that he has found you to be a good pick and there is no one coming to save you. Still, even these guys know that the Claydemore is not the best sword. They use it because they don't want to be hindered by the half Zatoichi's switch as they so heavily rely on their grenade launcher they don't want to worry about losing health or not being able to switch altogether if they don't get a kill. So in short, when you see this weapon on the battlefield, it's either going to be an easy pick for you, or you are the easy pick. Also, why does it have to have its one unique stat of longer charge duration gone? That would still work great with its new stats, just think of the possibilities. This guy is probably using the booties, since using a launcher of any kind is basically worthless with this equipped. Also, he always seems to have his charge ready, no matter what. You should always assume that Persian Persuader demos have their charge ready, because if you don't, you're gonna die. A lot. Oh hey, here's your screen shakes while I play some overly used meme song joke. <laughs> Valve, please bring back the old caber because that is, that's just ridiculous. That shouldn't, I, I just want to be able to terrorize snipers again, man. Just, just bring back the old caber. I miss it. Everybody misses it. Except sniper mains, but screw those guys. Alright, that's all the weapons for demo. But Soundsmith, what about the frying pan? You you forgot the frying pan, Soundsmith! Hey, uh, yeah, go watch the multi-class episode. It's literally the exact same as it was in there. Same deal with the pain train, the Zatuichi, and every stock reskin. Anyway, Heavy is up next, so let me know if you've got any suggestions for him, but, uh, yeah. Other than that, that's really it. I don't have anything else. So yeah, cool. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.